Welcome to Opinion Havers, a movie podcast for people named Tiffany. I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. Tyler, what did we watch? We watched The Matrix Resurrections. The Matrix 4. The fourth one. The Matrix, the Matrix colon Resurrections, comma, the fourth one. Yep. Probably. Tyler, wow. We, we're we here. We're at the top of the mountain. You know? Sorry. Top of the mountain, as people would say that aren't from where I'm from. Tyler, four Matrix movies. Who would have thought? Watched them all. Loved them all. And now we're here. Now we're here. We're here at the end of our journey, Cody. Journey's ended. We're all ready to unplug, you know, and goop on out of our eggs, get our thingies removed, the little circles, aggressively remove all circles, and uh, but also sometimes still have them. What a journey. Tyler, tell me all about, tell me all about Matrix Resurrections, The Matrix Resurrections. What even is this movie? So this is the thrilling continuation of the conclusion of the matrix trilogy so they made every the tr- good every good conclusion deserves a sequel i've always said that yeah it's a it's a movie it's you know they concluded the series with the third movie and this is the continuation of that conclusion right cody so it's it's neo and his friends messing about in the matrix love it you can always, you know, never hurts to spend another day or two in the Matrix. Yeah. I, uh, how'd it go for you? I know you're a fan. You like the whole series. Like, you enjoy them all. You're, you like Matrix 1, 2, and 3. Mm-hmm. They all did it for you. Coming back 20 years later, the Matrix Resurrections. What's your, what's your impression of it? Your little hot, your little first take. I mean, I I I enjoyed it. I thought it I thought it was on par with the other movies, mm-hmm. for better or worse. You know, I'm like as I see the uh, the some of the maybe like the hatred pe- some people are giving it because it's not like they. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's not like they did any drastically anything drastically different with this one. It's the same as the other. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a it's the fourth in a series. It's not a reboot. Cody, I ain't mm-hmm. about this reboot and stuff. No, no. Tell, I'll tell you. Tell me. I did not enjoy two and three nearly as much as one. Right, like I don't really like two and three very much. I did enjoy this one. I liked it. I thought it was a good update. You know, like it. It felt like oh, this is Matrixy, but it was like an update. You know, like they kind of brought it up to speed a little bit, um, freshened it up, but touch or two and i did i did enjoy it i liked it it was like i almost wish i could have just watched one and four you know but like that's not really possible because this is very much a sequel to the original trilogy as a whole but i enjoyed it you know i did like it i didn't it wasn't perfect you know it wasn't perfect like the matrix one was perfect but it was a really good one. i liked it i have a lot to say about it but and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I don't know. Are people people out here hate on this one. They're like not liking this one. I mean, I've heard. I mean, the same. It's getting like the same reviews and stuff that the the second one got. And I've heard a lot of people don't like it, but they're also the same kind of people that are like, oh yeah, you know, like I don't know what's a universally loved movie. Godfather. No, that's a trash movie. Uh, Avatar. They're like, Avatar is garbage, <laughs> and it never looked good. And it's like, you shut your mm. own mouth. All right? I'll say it right yeah. here, Cody. We brought up Avatar on the last one. I'm bringing it up right now. <laughs> I'm bringing it up early. Yeah. I'm bringing it up hard. Anybody who says they went into Avatar and thought, this looks like hot garbage, is lying to your face. Right. We all sat there, mouth agape like a bunch of idiots, just lapping it up because that movie was mm. groundbreaking. All right? Yeah, yeah. 
and all these <laughs> all these nerds are out here like mm, I didn't like it. It's like, well, you know what? It doesn't like you because you did like it. That's why, yeah, you hated it, Terrence. That's why you went to go see it seven times in IMAX. All right, obviously you hated that movie. That's why you spent your entire paycheck on IMAX Here's tickets luck. to see this movie and bought the collector's edition of it. All right. Here's not. Here's the way not to watch Avatar, which is the way I watched Avatar. I watched it like two months later at the Dollar Theater. No oh, that's 3D. Terrible. <laughs> it's just like like it still looked good, you know. Like they were like groundbreaking effects and everything. Like a whole 3D world created. Like cool. Good job, everyone. Um, you know, I did not see it in 3D. I did not get blown away. I watched it. I was like, oh, I see what they did. And then the writing was bad, and I was like, so I don't like it, you know, because that's, that's like, those are the kind of movies, I like the well-written movies. The, like I mean, the it's pretty Pocahontas. movies, they do don't have like, as much substance. Do you not like Pocahontas? I like the songs in Pocahontas. So you're racist, is what you're saying. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, I mean, look, you can say it's Pocahontas, but like, an adult woman doesn't hiss at a man in Pocahontas, you know? I think, you know, Cody, I'd be surprised if you were correct on that one. I watched, I recently watched Pocahontas, not that long, like a year or two ago, start of the pandemic. I didn't notice any hissing, you know? But she does talk to a tree. The, the kitty. The kitty cat hit, hissing is too much, you know. It just it was it was choices like that that made me laugh out loud in the movie theater, and um, my friend wanted me to go, and I sat there and I laughed at the movie. He wanted me to watch with him, and I didn't feel that bad because that's how much I didn't like love the movie, you know. Yeah, just my just my hot take. No one else is no one else is cool enough to hate on Avatar except for everyone else on the internet. Yeah. So that's the thing. Everybody's like, it. "Oh, Avatar is so bad," and they're not. Why are they making everybody so mad? They're so up. They're so oh, their jimmies are thoroughly rustled with all these sequels that James Cameron's making. But you know what? They're all gonna go see it. Every single one of right. them. Every single one of you haters, Cody, is gonna go see these Look, movies. I'll say this. <sighs> You know what I learned today? That was surprising what? to me. I learned that 6% of Americans do like 95% of the tweeting. <gasps> That's when I realized Twitter is like a much smaller market than like, I think it's like one in four people have a Twitter, like adults have Twitter or whatever. But like it's only a percentage of that are doing most of the posting, you know? So it's like Twitter is mm-hmm. like a smaller place than we think about. Yeah. Because there's so many people that tweet like 18 times a day, and it's like, that's too many mm-hmm. times. Right, You right. should get one tweet a day. The Twitter algorithm is bad. Like, it's so much worse than the other one, as far as, like, giving you a good feed of stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, follow us on Twitter, at Opinion Happens. Yes. We won't tweet 18 times a day. That's my, that's my guarantee to you. It's my promise. Yeah. Tyler, do you wanna do you wanna dive into this this guy? I wanna I wanna get this little man. This, Cody. I wanna hop on the back of this Ducati motorcycle, Cody. I want you to Oh yeah. I want you to grip me ever so tightly with them thighs, Cody. Just mm-hmm. I wanna feel my ribs about to crack with this pressure, Cody. That's how tightly yes. you need to grip here. I okay? will do this. Yeah. Because we're going for it, Cody. I'm gonna be like and we're gonna go. All right, we're going. We're doing it. We're going. We're going across the bridge. We're going across over a bridge into the city of Spoiler Town, USA. Beautiful, beautiful. Here's my question to you. Yeah. You want dibs, or do you want to? Do you want to forego your dibs to go first? You dibsing or you not dibsing? I'll I'll not dibs. I'll let you go first this time. Oh, all right. Okay. I hear you. I see you. I'm getting a timer ready. Oh, I'm going to get I think you're getting notes. a timer ready, but mine's already ready. 
I'm going to expose my notes out here, and I'm going to blow your mind with all of the takes. You ready? I'm, you know, I've been ready for my time. Too late. I had to pause. I'm all ready. Go. All right. Uh, as soon as this movie started, I was like, oh, no, they went too meta. You know, like, up, oh, we went too far. Okay? Because immediately it's like, hey, we're here. Neo, you made The Matrix. I remember The Matrix is a video game and we're a movie or a movie about how Neo made Matrix the video game and those were the movie. You know, I was like, oh, it went too far. By the end of the movie, they proved me wrong. All right, so I'm happy about that, okay? Jonathan Groff is out here, okay? He's the man we all know and love from Glee and uh, <clears throat> what uh, Hamilton and uh, Mindhunter and uh, Frozen. All right, we all know this man. We love him. He's out here. With the power ankles, okay? He's power ankling. No socks. Got the little moccasin slash loafers. Got the, the pants that the legs don't go down that high, that low, you know? So he's got the power ankles. He's showing the ankle off, and that's like the biggest power move you can do in business, okay? And he's out here doing it, right? He's Neo's partner. He's like, hey, man, we're the partners. You know, you're the guy who knows how to code and has the ideas, and I'm the guy who's here. For you to make money for me, you know? Let me tell you. Matrix, here's the thing about the Matrix. You watch it and you're like, I'm here for the leather, for the outfits, for the sunglasses. Boom. I think it was Neil Patrick Harris. He had the blue glasses, the blue frames. The glasses again. This is, this is why I think this movie held up in the terms of the Matrix. They went hard again on the glasses, all right? I was all about it. We're doing glasses. Loved it. Let's talk about Morpheus in this movie, right? So we got, I forget her name, the lady, she's out here, and she's like, is that Neo? No way. And then she finds Morpheus, and she's like, oh, snap. You know, she hooks up with Morpheus. It's like, I got to save Morpheus. We got to do this whole thing. Morpheus out here? In the first movie, it was like, does he have the best sunglasses? Yes. And that was kind of it, you know? It was the same kind of wardrobe everyone else was doing. In this one, they're like, what if... What if Morpheus was just like a sex symbol, you know, like magenta suits and like going hard on all the outfits? And that's what they went for. And I was so happy. Like every time he popped up with one of his outfits, I was like, yes, Morpheus, you're killing it out here. You're putting everyone else to shame. Like everyone else, no one looked bad in this movie, except they all look bad when they're next to Morpheus. All right. Who's a sexy man. I love that they upped the sex appeal on the Morpheus. Okay. I'm all about that. Loved it. Let me tell you, when they get, okay, so they free Neo, right? Neo's no longer, in, you know, they have to un, unmatrix Neo, right? And they're like, hey, we're going to take Neo, and they take him back to what the new city is. I forget the name of it, because it's been like two weeks since I've seen this movie. Not my fault, all right? And immediately it's like, oh, it's Jada Pinkett Smith's character, and now she's the leader of the group. And I was like, oh, no, she's doing it. She's doing the bureaucracy again. Like, the whole point of this movie is that, we're cool and we don't have to do that stuff. And then you always show up to the civilization and they're like, sorry, we're doing paperwork. You don't get to do your cool stuff. You go sit down. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, you know? They bust them out. They do the adventure. Loved it. Uh, my next note is similarly related. Nairobi is a B, all right? She is the worst. You know, last movie, it was the council, right? In Matrix 3, it's like, well, the whole council are jerks and the military guy's kind of a jerk, but whatever. This one, it's just her. She doesn't report to nobody. <laughs> She's just out here being a B to everyone, not let, you know, it's literally like, she's like, we can't have open the one. That's what saved us the first time. It's like, Nairobi, what do you, did you learn no lessons from the first three movies? Neo saved everyone, and now you're saying we can't deal with Neo anymore? So stupid. It's like, really, dude? Really? You're out here? It's like in the New Testament when you got like Thomas and people where you're like, Dude, we're saying it's happening again. And he's like, I doubt that very much. You know, it's like, uh, you're the worst. Being the worst out here, okay? Oh, man. Is it called IO? That's the name of the new seed, I think, IO. <clears throat> Here's what, this movie made me like Matrix 3 a little better because it made me feel like Neo's sacrifice in 3 was worth it. Because I feel like the end of 3, you're like, oh, the war kind of ended. What does that mean for everyone? And this one was like, hey, good news. 
society has advanced. Everyone's still safe. There's like this pocket and like, look, their tech is advancing and they're learning to get along with certain machines and AI is like not an evil thing anymore. Like, I love that. That was maybe my favorite part of it. It's like, oh, they're explaining the cool technology they have and society is going on. Like, I really like that. It made me be like, oh, thank goodness, like something good came out of, you know, the what happened with the war the last time, you know? That's maybe my favorite part about this movie. It gave me some love back for the other ones, the bad ones, you know, the ones that everyone dislikes. Cody, there's no bad ones. How dare you? They're all treasures, all right? Let me get, my, let me get these notes here. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now stop talking. Tyler, don't Cody. lie. Going. You no, don't have shush. notes. No, shush. I have notes, Cody. All right, here we go. This is going through these notes. Opening dialogue. 10% too fast. All right, I'm saying it right now. No one else is saying it. I'm saying it. They made it to where they're like, oh, we're going to have them say the same thing. We're going to do the same stuff. I watched a video where a guy was like, did you know? Like it was an Easter egg. Like it was an, an obvious thing that they did that. He's like, most of you won't know. It's the same opening with the same dialogue. And it's like, I hate you and you're everything you're about, guy. All right. Anyway, it's the same dialogue, but they say the words 10% too fast. And it drove me nuts. All right. It's like they're too excited to say the words, right? Everybody else was all like, oh, we've been, tra- we've been hacked. We're traced or something. Is this line secure? This one, they're like, is this line secure? <laughs> We're being traced. It's like, no, it's like, deliver the lines. The pills are so shiny. Before we had NyQuil, DayQuil. That was your red pill, blue pill, all right? That's what it was. Nobody likes to talk about it, but it's facts. All right, Cody? Now, what? They're swallowing aluminum cans or something. What is happening here? It's too, they are too shiny. Cody, look at how many O. Oh, can you see how many O? Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that he's an agent. I like that they made the Morpheus character is like a mix of Smith and Morpheus that Neo programmed as like a subconscious way to get out. I liked it. I liked that a lot. A lot of people out here were like, where's where's Lawrence Fishburne? Lawrence Fishburne's old. Nobody knows this, but I know it. All right. And you don't understand this. All right, Cody. So it's like, you know what? (laughs) He's old. All right. This boy, he's young. He's sexy. And he can pull off suits that are all one color, all right? Entire head to toe with an ascot, multiple buttons. Uh, you know, it, he can pull it off. You know, Lawrence Fishburne, not pulling that off, all right? That's what you need to know. Freaking Chad, am I right? Yeah. Warner Brothers is the worst, am I right? You know, they say it in the movie. Uh, I put, again, shiny pill. Because it popped up again, and again, I thought, that's too shiny. It's too much shine on the pill. Also, I hate the game developers. I hate them. I hate everything they were saying about everything at all times. They were the worst. They were like, they're like, let's boil down the worst of like San Francisco society and put it in a room together. And that's what you would get with these game devs. And I was like, I hate this. I hate this. Set the room on fire. Let's begin anew. Begin the world anew without this what's going on in here all right we don't need it all right and then cody we got to the part where it was you know where uh neo and trinity are having their little oh i recognize you but i'm you're tiffy you're tiff and i'm 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 tommy i'm tom you know little tom and tiff all right little tim tom tim tiff tom tiff all right they're out here they're having their uh coffee lunch time together and i was like they're, they're good together. I like them. They got really nice. It's nice to see them talking together. I like it. The suits. I like the suits. You know? You know the suits. It's orange. It's magenta. It's a different. It's a different colors. All right? He coordinated, and I appreciate it. He's out here. He's been forced to wear a suit his entire life. Now he's going to wear good suits, Cody. Now he's going to wear good suits. It's going to be cool. All right? The Frenchman. Here's my exact note. Because I couldn't, I don't know how to spell his name. So I wrote, the Frenchman is a big wow. All right. That's a wow moment. I mean, <laughs> I've never, been, I've never like, in all the movies we've watched, I have never audibly gone, wow, at a part in a movie until Smith, who I at first was like, are they really about to make Kristoff from Frozen, Agent Smith? But I thought, I was like, okay. I liked it. I think he did an alright job of it. 
I dug it at the end. You know, by the end they had me. All right, and I was like, oh, are they about to make? And they're, they're like, I was like, I found some of your friends. And I was like, are these are these some Merovingians like minions that they killed? They are they're dead. It's not like they you not know, like he beat them up and they ran away. These guys are supposed to be dead. And then it cuts, it turns to the Merovingian, and it looks like the man is covered in pom poms made from the garbage. And I'm like, what is this, man? What is happening? Where have you been, dude? What what have you gone through? It's not like you were you were already like a fugitive of the system. What drove you to this state? Because they were already out to get you. All right, they already would kill you given the chance. So the fact that now they are also trying to kill you should not have changed oh, your position in society. Oh, Tyler, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cut you off right there and jump right in with you because there's one weak spot in this movie. And it's when the Merovingian pops up, and he is dressed like remember the movie Zoolander when they do the derelict. You know, it's like the garbage, homeless person fashion. You know, that's the idea for their fashion line. He, you're exactly right. He's dressed just like that, and it's like, but and he look, the other remnants are fighting people, and he is like perched like a bird above them, rambling about nothing. Well, and I was like this. For a house, the whole movie, they're like, you know what? Let's make it real sleek. You know, we're going to give people some great suits. We're going to make it really cool. <laughs> and then it's like, also, they're going to fight people dressed up with garbage. Like, I don't, that was the part that I'm like, I probably could have skipped this one. Like, this scene, maybe, let's just fight some agents, maybe. I don't know, because, yeah, no. I had a, I had the same wow moment. Like, my eyes were like, why? You know, your eyes, like, just, like, go wide. Like, I don't know. <laughs> We're out here making choices. There were a lot of choices, and I appreciate they went hard on the choices. That's one choice. Maybe they could have skipped. Maybe. Just I, that's what I'm it, saying. Okay, I'm gonna. I want to rag on it a little bit more. So they're all like, "Oh, they've been, you know, like you did this to them. Like you put them in this position, which they already were in that position. They were already fugitives. Okay. They even called out in the like the second one i think or maybe it was the third one how like the merovingians saved them from being deleted like the system tried to delete them and he saved them from it so the system trying to delete them should not have changed anything but also they all have their weapons (laughs) but not their clothes why were your weapons fine why were you able to keep those in fine working order but not your clothes also your computer programs shouldn't you just be able to kind of pick your clothes you know why it's not like you're i mean i've known i've seen homeless people that are dressed better mm-hmm. than this all right people that have been homeless yeah, most of their right. lives that are dressed better right and it's like what are you what are you, what is going on they also like the the way the marriage it says his like this is an over kind of thing is like are you trying to set him up for like if you want to do a fifth movie he's the bad guy because they're definitely going to try to do more if this makes money, you know. They're not going to not but, do that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think the talks are already out for the fifth one just because they're like, you know, that didn't do well. But it was like, well, you released it on HBO Max, and it was out the same time as the Spider-Man movie. So yeah. everyone saw Spider-Man instead of this for sure. But so I don't know if they're going to get the funding for five. At least what I've, the headlines I've seen is like, uh, this did not do well. I doubt they make another one. Yeah, I this don't know, the- man. The Merovingian was like, of all the things to bring back, it was like a weird, it's not even, it wasn't weird to bring him back. It was weird the way they brought him back. Yeah. It was, yeah. Is like, um, I will say. Where was he? Oh, go ahead. What happened to him? I don't know, man. I don't know. I wanted, I wanted. I didn't even like his character, but I wanted better for him than that. You know, that is not the fate I desired for the American I, team. Here's the thing. He's, you were saying he was just saying stuff in the court. Like, he was not, like, he wasn't just saying random words, right? He was giving, like, a speech about, and it was, like, at first. It seemed like think, a speech completely unrelated to the plot, though, but, you know? He was like, hey, I'm out here have my own adventure, and let me tell you about it. Well, like. At first, I thought, oh, he's given like a, oh, I was like this high, I was an important person. I had all this influence, people, you know, like all that. <laughs> and now I'm nothing. And then I slowly realized, 
No, he's literally like going off on how phones have like ruined society and he's like we used to talk and have conversations and now everybody's like beep, 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 beep. and i'm like are you are you seriously like an exiled <laughs> super villain that's complaining about the, the new generation culture in like what the that's, heck that's dude? what's weird about it too is because it's like that is not how culture in the real world exists and furthermore they're in a modal right like they're in a version of the matrix well, this is after. So I don't understand. This is in the Matrix is it? itself. Yeah. So only Smith was in the, the, Morpheus Smith was in the modal. And then she busts him out of the modal. Oh, I thought then he there. was in that same modal. No. Because mm. remember, like, because the, the, the new Matrix. agent Smith, Jonathan Golf, 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 Golf. Uh, he's in. Uh, is it Golf or Groff? Is golf hard out here? I don't say he's golf. in. Uh, he's like business partners with Neo. No, it's Groff. Is it Groff? Got an R in there. Oh yeah, it's Groff. It's weird, but yeah, no, there's an R. How, where is this R? Oh, there is an R. What the heck? I know. Yeah, no, it's a weird one. Groff. Groff. Whatever. Kristoff. All right. We'll just call him Kristoff from now on. All right. Let's call him Kristoff. That's a good, yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Or Sven. Kristoff slash Sven. Or, or King George. Whatever. Is it play King George? Uh, Is he play King George? Is King George in Hamilton? Oh. He plays King George? Yeah, but nobody watches Hamilton, you know? You get out of here right now. Yeah, I don't know, man. He popped up, and he left, and you know it's fine. I, yeah, I love. I really liked. I thought Jessica Henwick was great in this. She played Bugs, who she's the one who frees Morpheus. I thought she was great. I've seen her in a couple other, like a couple other things here and there. Like she was in Iron Fist. I think it was the thing I most recognized her from. I thought she was great in this. I really liked her. She's like a. She's kind of like a female. What's the name of that? Henry Golding. You know that guy? The Crazy Rich Asians guy? And the yeah. uh, G.I. Joe Snake Eyes guy? Yes. Remember? Oh, yeah. She was great. I really liked her. I like the blue hair. It's fun. Um, I did like... I also, yeah, so I, they kind of re-brought in different incarnations of characters, right? Like Smith is now Jonathan Groff. Morpheus was like an agent mixed with Morpheus. And then instead of the architect, we had Neil Patrick Harris, who was the analyst. I actually really preferred Neil Patrick Harris's portrayal versus like the architect. I think that's part of what I liked about this movie is they kind of took stuff from the other movies and refreshed and they made it a little better. Except for the Merovingian, who was a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. I really liked Neil Patrick Harris. I thought he was great. I mean, the whole movie, right, is like. Just like the first, one of the big strengths of the first one was it was such a, what's the, what's the word, the, a commentary on society at the time, you know? Mm. And like, that's why, like a lot of the choices they made for certain characters and like how people acted and why they did certain things are because of the technology and the culture of the time. And this one is, they took that, that's like, the and they just were like, okay, so we'll just, repl we'll take those same themes and replace modern stuff with like we'll just update that so even like the mm. analyst talking about the way he talked about the architect is the way that like the new 24 year old ceo that's forced out the 74 year old ceo you know like the, for this company and they're like obviously he doesn't know what he's talking about massively underqualified but somehow talked his way into this job we talk about yeah. the old guy like he doesn't know we're here we're about change we're about dynamic energy all right we're we're an agile swift company or what i don't know i don't know mm -hmm. the keywords cody i'm not a businessman all right i don't you do got, you business. got most of them so cody give me give me a ceo speech you're you're there you've killed the ceo of your current like, company you've taken <laughs> over you rule the world now as far as like, uh, we're out here we're going to synergize okay we're going to create efficiencies within new columns of the organization that's what you don't understand we're going to be moving through the cloud all right through the cloud and synthesizing data so that we can do even faster decision making that's what we're doing 
Do you want to value the data? Shareholders. That seems like a bad thing to do. I don't no, think no. We synthesize data. It's not what we're going to do. It's what I'm going to say we're going to do while everyone else does their normal jobs. Do you okay? want to synchronize the data? And if the stock goes up, then I'm good to go. That's all that matters. Yeah. You just got to It doesn't matter smart. what I say. It only matters that our stock price goes up. That's what you don't understand about business. That's the only purpose of business. And business is the business of the day, Cody. Exactly. I did. You talked about the all the game developers and how I love that whole thing. I was like, yeah, <laughs> these guys are all idiots. This is awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. it was so what, good. I, I, I am kind of amazed, you know, because this is one of those things where it's like, they're so, it makes you, it always kind of makes you wonder, like, do the people, do the money bags at these companies like Warner Brothers, do they not see it? Or do they just say to themselves, we got to let one or two of these, like, we hate the producers movies come out so that people are like, ah, the producers are in on the joke. And when they can be like, ah, we're in on it. And then, you know, mm. and then everybody else, and then they quietly kill the career of those people in the background. All right. You know, Definitely, is that what's yeah. going on? Cause it's like, it's so obviously like, you know, it's like the whole thing. They're like, Oh, we want to make matrix four. And Lana was like, yeah, that's a good idea. And then proceeded to make an entire movie about why this is a terrible idea, and why you uh -huh. sh why like reboot culture and like banking on nostalgia is such a like a, a cr like a bad way to make a business decision and like make entertainment products. Mm -hmm. But they did. Well, it was like they were trying to reverse engineer a plot, you know, where you're like, I don't think that's how good ideas come. It's like, yeah. you know. Yeah, they're like, we're making oh, a sequel to The Matrix. What are, we doing? what are some of the... They just kept throwing out, like, buzzwords, and it's like, none of these mean anything. Yeah. One word. Bullet time. <laughs> yeah. That's, what? That's two words. Who's the one guy who's like, let me just say this. I don't like your games. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't like any of The Matrix games. <laughs> yeah. But he was there to make the new one. I really would love to, it made me think like, I really want to talk to a game developer and have the, cause I'm sure they would be like, that's exactly what it's like. It's weeks and weeks of a bunch of dudes walking around in a room saying nothing that means anything. And then yeah. those dudes come out of that room, look, you, you're sorry, butt in the eye. And they say, what have you done on the programming? And you go, what? <laughs> we don't even know what we're making yet. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then they say you're fired and then they go back in and then you show up the next day and they forgot you existed so you're not fired. You know? Yeah. Mhm. Mm that's the that's the glamorous world of game development, Cody. Love it. Get me get me right on in there. All right, since we're picking uh, apart this movie. I hate take issue with one I find one glaring plot hole that I've have a hard time much like how when the writing's real bad or the dialogue's real bad, I have a hard time overcoming this one major plot hole. Are you ready for this, Cody? Yeah. So, what is his name? Deuce? Dune? Doof? What is his name? Dorf? Who? Yeah. The, the handler, basically. The guy that's like the program that's supposed to like keep Neo in check introduces him to trinity oh jude jude yeah isn't that isn't that counterproductive to them wouldn't it be better if he just like saw her every day and was like oh she's cute maybe i guess maybe the analyst never thought that they would actually you know, like, because isn't the whole point that, like, people want to be controlled or whatever? And so it's like, but oh, they have this hope of being able to break free or do something different, but they never really will, you know? So it's like, oh, you know, go ahead and talk to Trinity. But her name's Tiffany, and she's got Chad and her kids, you know? It's like nothing's ever going to happen there, you know? So that makes it that much more potent you know 
Yeah, which I think they tried to the explain it away. From. Oh, sorry. I think they tried to explain it away by saying like, you know, where he references like the more like pain and anguish he causes them, the better, the more energy they produce. And like, yeah. So that was like a trying to get them to be more bro- like him being kind of like bummed out that she had a husband is a a way to get more energy out of him. But at the same time, then they show later, he's like, oh, yeah, I tried a ton of different things. And you guys always busted your way out of it and totally wrecked my shop, you know? And then he's like, so what I tried, so what I decided to do was introduce you to each other in the one that works. And it's like, that's stupid of you guys. Because every time you've done this, it's failed and fallen apart. But then that opens the door to, did he know it would fall apart? I think that's the whole point, you know, is that like, is, are we in the matrix? Yeah, definitely. Start popping some red pills. See if someone comes to get you. Yeah. Here's the real talk, Cody, you know, and I think we've discussed this more than once and I'm pretty sure I know your answer on this one. If you were like, if you could be, if like suddenly you snap my fingers and I'm like, Hey man. That Matrix movie is real. All right. Yeah, so you can take this pill and go live in it. Well, I'll even put you in Io. You know, I'll put you in the better version of the city. All right. Or you can stay here and keep living your life exactly how it is. And, you know, live out your life. Grow old, yeah. die. And then, uh, you know, don't have to worry about any of that. Or you can live uh, in this uh, underground city that everybody's like, look at these clouds. They're pretty cool, and you might one day get to eat a strawberry. Which yeah. uh, which which way are you going? Which way am I going? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I might just hang out. You know. <laughs> I'll just stick around. Like, is the resistance having that much fun? Like, they've all got some sort of autocratic bureaucracy to deal with. You know, it's like, how's that any different? How's that any different from you know, like? Having to be under the rule of Nairobi, how's that any different from me just living in the Matrix, you know? Is she going to tell me I can't take my cool ship into... I break out into the real world, but I still got to do what someone else wants me to? No way. Pass. But Cody, your mind would be free. But also, you would have to... You you would absolutely be cleaning the poo filters. It's like, do you want to be a slave to the machines? Or do you want to live in fear of the machines you're like i don't know <laughs> whatever it's like is there an option same where problem could... different world you know <laughs> is there an option where i don't know the machines exist let's go with that one <laughs> right yeah because like the way i'm know. looking at it like i'm giving back if i'm a pl- if i'm a battery for the matrix i'm giving back to society you know what i mean like even if something. i don't accomplish anything i've i've generated energy for society to keep on right how many people can say that how many people can say that in this world we're all out here consuming you could be producing yeah you know and that's that's really all what what are you doing what are you doing then what am i doing yeah i mean i'd have questions i'd have more questions than they seem to have you know and i think that's why nobody's come to offer me the pills (laughs) I'd be like, I would ask him, show me some details about what kind of, are we, you know, what kind of food are you eating? What kind of clothes are you wearing? You know, like what kind of job would I be doing? Like, what would be my, like right now, I'm, I'm fairly well, you know, my day job gets, pays me quite a bit and I'm fairly well, like, you know, in it and able to afford things and having fun with my life for the most part. And if you're going to say, I take this pill and I'm free, but all of a sudden I'm picking up and moving, you know, bags of sand from one cart to the next cart for no reason all day, every day, then I'm going to be like, you know what? I'll also, just, I'm just gonna, you know, also there it. is an eventuality where you might die in a war. <laughs> like, you could also just die fighting the machines, you know, like that's in the cards, like very well in the cards if you leave it the matrix. Yeah. And like... We beat the Matrix. Neo beat the Matrix. 
But anyway, most of society is still plugged into the Matrix, you know? Which I think, I mean, at the end of Matrix 3, they kind of alluded to that too, that it would only be, the only people that would get let go would be the ones that wanted to. The ones that wanted to stay would stay plugged in. Machines still need right. the energy from, you know, the big battery city thing. Yeah. So, like, which is kind of, here's the thing, like, what kind of razor-thin margins are you running? If you lose 1% of your production capacity, then all of a sudden, wars break out because there's not enough power to go around. You you needed another. You should have built another Matrix City, all right? Mm-hmm. You should have two. If 1% is enough to make or break it for you. But then you could say, well, they're right. efficient. But then it's like, shouldn't they have counted on the fact that they knew one they can't percent bank of people that energy out. anywhere. Like you're supposed to be intelligent, artificially so, so much so that you put humans underground. You know, yeah. in hiding, you can't store any of that. You can't. You can't put like uh, what? Shouldn't you, you be know, like the most like a, efficient planner ever? Here's what you do. You throw up like a weather balloon with solar panels on it above the clouds with a cable coming down. Throw up a billion of them. You could probably make them. Who cares? You know, nobody cares. You know, spew as much toxic junk into the atmosphere as you want. Nobody cares at this point. There's no sun breaking through these clouds anymore anyway. Throw that up there. There's still wind probably. You get some solar. You get some, not solar. You get some wind turbines in there. You make. You get a way to make up the deficit. All right. You should really, you know, you want maximum efficiency. You really only want to be operating like 80 to 90% capacity anyway. That way that extra percent can kind of take care of them fluctuations. You know, maybe, you know, maybe there's something, maybe there's a big boom in new machine births or whatever. However, they're, you know, going like, on. Maybe they need more Here's the power. other thing. Here's the thing about the whole thing. This is, if they did make a Matrix 5, this is what I would need to see. What are the machines doing with all this? Like, okay, you dominated the planet. The few humans that aren't in your matrix are hiding. What do you have to show for it? It seems like they're no more than animals being like, all right, we got to produce more. So there's more machines so that we're getting, are they fulfilled? Are they self-actualized? Are they having fun? Are they, cause they can't even have fun. Why did they get the planet and not us? We at least have a good time sometimes, you know, the machines, it seems like it's all we're robots. We're here. We're all put to work. Like where's the, where's the coffee bar? You know, where's the movie theater? Like, yeah. what are did. the machines even doing with their life? Like if, you know, are they hedonistic? Is it all about just having a good time? Or it seems like they're very boring with what they do. Yeah. I mean, they even kind of allude to the fact that like even the machines want out of the machine society because there's machines now. Like that's the whole thing with IO is it's a machine and human city, like free humans for right. machines. And they, like, develop these ways for programs to, like, manifest themselves into the real world and all that. And it's like, mm-hmm. so, I mean, like. Which I thought was a much better use of the technology than giant baby face. They're like, what if we had, like, a Morpheus thing and he could help free, you know, I was like, oh, right. that's better. <laughs> I like that yeah. better than giant baby face. Yeah, the baby face still haunts me sometimes. And it's like, why? What? What is your purpose? Yeah. You know, it's all. It's also like they never really, except for that one movie, address the fact that like, I guess they call them the suits. You know, that's what uh, the the analyst calls them, calls the bosses the suits. But they do, I mean, I do like that this one, they do put more effort into being like, the machines are like, they've gotten to a point where they're sentient. They're, it's just like people where there's different cities. They might be different like groups different like heads of those cities and now they're fighting over the power reserves and this guy the analyst has so much power because he found a way to stop that hmm. um and that's why he's not deleted i did i did like how they killed him and then they just could bring him back and they just killed him several times there at the end and then just yeah. snapped their fingers brought him back but cody you're missing the main point though the main point that I know you you thought of when you were watching the movie and you thought, oh, no. Here it comes. So here it is, Cody. Trinity mm-hmm. and Neo 
What are they, Cody? Dyad. Say the word. Dyad. A dyad, Cody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> What'd you think of, so for the ending, what did you think of, you know, the big ending where it's like, hey, look, Trinity, she held Neo up and they did the thing. How was that for you? Um, I mean, I didn't like hate it, but I didn't, I'm, I don't, I didn't have, I think the like, oh, awesome reaction that I think they wanted, you know? I was yeah, like, oh, I kind of figured thing. it was going that way. I was like, yeah, maybe they'll probably do something like that. Like, okay. Yeah. Or be like, he's not the one, they're the one. Hmm. Yeah. You know? But also Smith right. is the one. Yeah. And by, yeah, so now Morpheus kind of is too. Morpheus is also the one. Because he's part of, yeah. We're all the one. We're Cody. all the one. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, I mean, they're all linked. It, yeah. I think it, I like the movie. As far as like the journey of it, you know, I was like, oh, call back to the old Matrix, but it's in a new sort of style. And is Neo, you know, are Neo and Trinity still going to be together? Like, well, it was decent enough motivation. Enjoyed it. I liked the new character. You know, I liked revamped Morpheus. I really liked Bugs. Thought there were, you know, and I liked the new IO. So they're all that, I think, were real big pluses for the movie. Um, and as a result, I did enjoy it. I don't think it was like a perfect film, but I think uh, it was a good one. I did like it. Yeah, I mean, it was much Enough better. going for it. Is it I, I mean, it's probably the Wachowskis. Well, it's not Wachowskis. It's just Lana. I think it's probably her best movie since Matrix 1, probably, you know, yeah. if you look yeah. at the track record. <clears throat> um, I do have a few fun facts. <gasps> Give them to me. I'm going to tell you about them. So I did have the question, because as soon as I saw the credits, and I was like, oh, just Lana Wachowski directed it. I was like, why not Lily Wachowski? It was kind of interesting because Lily was like, hey, um, she didn't want to rehash any of her former work before her transition, especially after the loss of her parents. Like, my parents died, I transitioned, and I felt, I just really felt like it was time for me to move forward versus, like, look back and, like, redo something or, you know, work on something from that time. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, this is my favorite fun fact, probably. So Chad in the movie is oh. actually, let me get his name right. His name is Chad in real life. Nice. His name is Chad Stileski. He is married to Carrie Ann, what's her name? Uh, you know, Carrie girl, Moss. Trinity. Yeah. Carrie Ann Moss. And it was the stunt double for Neo in the original Matrix and is now the director of the John Wick movies. So this guy's been doing stunts in Hollywood forever. Stunt double for Keanu Reeves for the original Matrix trilogy. And hooked up with Keanu to direct all the John Wick movies, and he's married to Carrie Ann Moss. So fun little family there. Yeah. So they're a real. They're not just a Matrix family. They're a real life family. And that you know that's that's what you kind of like blow your see. mind a little bit. Oh, blow it! Yeah, Chad. There are good Chads in the world after all. That's what I learned from this movie. I think that was the lesson they wanted us to get out of it. Okay, Keanu and Carrie did the building jump at the end. 20 times so they had to do that building jump suspension like over the whole thing it's like a stunt 20 different times to get like all the shots together for it i feel like i could do two or three maybe i feel like after that like okay i think i think you're crazy and i won't do it again that's a lot of times to jump off a building yeah i remember when, when they were promoting this they had the jefferson airplane song white rabbit which is a pretty well-known song and i didn't like it in the trailer. I was like, I don't love that song anyway, despite being, you know, an Alice in Wonderland fan. So don't really like the song that much, and I didn't think it was well used in the trailer. And then when they used it in the movie, I was like, this is great. The way they used it as, like, orchestral, and they had, like, hints of it here and there, I was like, this works great in the movie. I just don't really like it in the trailer. So I thought they did a great job with that. So those are those are the fun facts. Um, you mentioned liking the actress who played... Oh. The actor who plays Morpheus. Yeah. He's a new one. He's an up and comer. Um, his name is hard to say. Yeah, no, go for it. Yahya Abdul Mateen the second? Something yeah. like that. Sorry if I said it wrong. But he was in Aquaman, he was Manta. He was in Candyman, the new one, which was very good. And he is in uh The Trial of the Chicago Seven, which is a good one. And he's in the Watchmen series, which is a very good one. So 
Oh, he's an us as well. So he's, he's pretty. He's getting hot right now. I would say. Oh yeah. Got a little streak going. Some big movies, some smaller movies. He's uh, he's uh, he's coming up. Maybe he'll be in the new Captain Marvel because that is the same. The lady directing Captain, the new Captain Marvel, is directed Candyman. So maybe we'll see him in the MCU as well. Who knows? That'd be cool. Given giving him some buzz. I, I've got a fun fact for you. Oh you know, yeah, it's not nece- It's it's kind of about the movie. You know, it's not about the movie. It's about the movie. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Yeah, you, yeah. Hit me. You know what I mean? Okay. So this movie, its original release date would have lined up with the original release date for John Wick Four, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Could yeah. you imagine how hard it would have been trashed in the theaters if it not only went up again? Because Spider Man probably would have come out earlier. Had all these hit their original dates. But it would have mm-hmm. been the Matrix Four going up against John Wick Four, right? Which is definitely going to be the cool Can you movie. Imagine two Keanu Reeves blockbusters in the same weekend. That would yeah. have been been a brawl. It would have been. I don't think it would have made as much money as it did. Well, that's hard to say too, because it's like, well, John. Wait, no. This I was going to say this one isn't radar. Totally is. So never mind. Very much going for similar audiences there. Yeah. Yeah. But John, John Wick is so much hotter. newer and more on people's minds. Yeah, and like a, a lot a cooler right action movie. The Matrix. Yeah. Because this movie, it takes a while to kind of get going. I I distinctly remember like kind of being like, you know, like after like the third time he almost wakes up, you know, it's like, I was like, oh, God. all right, when are they getting into yeah. this? Because like, you know... You can't end this movie with and he woke up and it's like you can't end it like that. Like you, you've done too mm-hmm. much before. You got to do a lot with him already woken up and being like yeah the yeah. one. I I tell you I didn't like how they did his like bullet stopping powers had like his little force push. Uh, Bailey didn't like that. I didn't I mind it. Bailey it. didn't like that either. Yeah, because in the anti- first one, like because so they set up that power in the first movie. You know, where he's like, right. you know, he's like, what are you saying? When I, you know, when I become the one, I can dodge bullets. And Morpheus has that cool line where he said, Neo, I'm saying when you become the one, you won't have to. And then mm-hmm. it has him just stopping the bullets. But he just stops them. It's not like an, a thing that takes a bunch of effort or like a, like a thing where he right. pushes now them. Right, now he has to like, off of Kame, like Kamehameha, the bullets now. Yeah. And that's like all yeah. of his powers are. He just, it's just effortless which i you make it where it's like he's learning again you know and he can only he Mm -hmm. can't do it the same way but it's like i feel like they just changed the nature of that whereas before it was not necessarily him throwing up like a force field that stopped him it was just him being like stop to the bullets and the bullets had to listen you know Mm -hmm. because he can do whatever he wants cody that's the whole point of the one yeah 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 also it is interesting oh oh, go ahead if you make the the original matrix was made to be like they say it in the original trilogy right where the that original matrix was or the previous matrix was designed with him in mind and then he was designed and produced at a certain point like he's made by the machines to be able to control the matrix. So when you make the right. new matrix, do you still need, like, I guess, do you still need him to have this ultimate power? Cause that explain like the fact that the only explanation would be that he based the matrix on both of them. Whereas the previous matrix was based on him. And that's why she also has mm. the one powers now. Yeah, that does. I mean, I guess that does make sense, right? Cause they're the dyad and they're there and they're on separate little pods and, close but never touching that's a good point and that's i guess that would be my question right because the whole point of the original trilogy was like hey we he filled the prophecy of the one he brought balance to the force whatever um and this one you see the results of it like 20 years later it's like oh hey io is here and they're starting to bring in the machine so it would be interesting if they did keep it going with like hey and five is the one where we're gonna say hey this is the war to end wars right we're gonna unite with the machines that are ready to like advance society and be part of this thing that works you know instead of just being putting the other one into slavery and we'll take down the machines that are still just like no no we're out here 
Yeah. We're here to suck the juices out of your brains and that's all we need you for. You know, it's like, I, you know, that is something they could pursue if they wanted to. It's like, hey, remember in three when we did the whole war thing, it could be like, hey, no, we're, we're going to, we're going to finish the war and we're going to find some sort of peace or some sort of balance. I don't know. So I, I don't think they will just based on the box office response to this one. I think you were the only person I know that has seen it in theaters. Oh, here's a fun fact for you. I was going to go see it today and uh, a little thing called Winter Storm Keenan in the Northeast really shut everything Kenan. down. Today. Keenan. <laughs> yeah. Keenan, I can only. There's only one Keenan, and it's Keenan Thompson. And it's yeah. offen, offen, offensive to me that there's a storm with the same name. It's so named know? in his honor, Cody. They're big fans, all right? Um, so they decided to drop, you know, like a foot of snow around here. Right. So I I had to watch it at home on my TV, <gasps> not in the theater. It's a little, it's a little sneaky, a mm-hmm. little dark web surfing. and It was, the, the, it a, did present me with the option of renting it or buying it for about the same, for like almost the exact same oh, price. Oh, it was rentable? Yeah, for it was like the, oh, do you want to pay like, Twenty-five dollars to rent this, or thirty dollars to just buy it. And I was like, I'm just gonna, buy yeah. It. I'm just buy that's it. that's a bummer that like, I did want you. To, I wanted someone to see it in theaters because I was like, this look cool. Like it looks like a cool movie. I bet it'd be awesome to see in a big screen. Yeah, but but the, also the theaters it's in at this point prior like would not the good look ones. much bigger than my TV. Would, right? Would yeah. Look worse. But yeah, uh, you got that bougie boy TV. So so fancy. That's the oh, thing, fancy. Cody. They don't got OLED TVs if I left the Matrix. I mean, I'll lose my OLED. That's the point, yeah. Can't lose it, Cody. Can't yeah. give it up. All right, I need it. Yeah. That's what gives me my powers. <laughs> what is Nairobi's deal? Like, can we talk about how awful she is still? Yeah, she's to the this worst. Day? I like, hear cheating, like, first off. And the first original train is like, I'm cheating. I'm not loyal. And in this one, it's like, I'm in charge, and I'm just as much of a douchebag as the council was, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, Neo, the guy who saved us from the machines? Screw that guy. Like, really? Yeah, I like how she's like, oh, yeah, they were there. I looked them in the eyes as they were about to kill us all while you were on your super secret mission to stop them. And then they just stopped and flew away. Anyway, I know it wasn't you that did it. So yeah, I don't well, know why they left, but it definitely wasn't you. And it's like, awful. What? Man. Well, it's like, what all right, Niobe, we all know you're just Jada Pinkett Smith in old person makeup. Don't try exactly. to deny it. Exactly. Is there anything else about this movie? Or are you ready to slap a rating on it? Are you ready to grade it? I mean, there's, there's a lot about the movie, you know. It's, there's so much. It's so obvious. Like, I got, I got a couple more points, and then I'm ready to grade it. Okay, hit me. Hit real, me. Let me hit you real quick with these. I, I have mixed. I think they did a good job of setting it up for a sequel, but they didn't do like the subtle way. They're like, set it up in such a way it's like there will be sequels. So it's like if this was successful enough to get sequels, I was like, okay, this is a good way to set it up. But if it's not getting a sequel, there's so many loose threads that it's so dumb that they left. Like, mm. I liked um, the new Smith, you know, with his line where he's like, you, anyone could be you, but I was always anyone. He puts his glasses on and then, oh, shoot, he was just the, like, he is an agent. He can just take anybody over, you know, like, he's, mm-hmm. and then he just dips, just that poor bartender, you know. And, like, but him and, like, the last thing the Merovingian says, I'm like, are you just, is it going to be them being the bad guys? Because that's a bad pair. Like, Yeah, no. Because it's not even like you're going up against the Merovingian. It's like the Merovingian is unhinged, dressed in garbage, and he is now the dude. And you're like, oh. Yeah, no. Yeah. Not ready for that. Yeah. Oh, man. And that's it. I liked the... I liked the... the uh, What's the word? I like the attitude of Iowa when they went there, where it was like the machines are enslaving humans for power and survival and stuff. But in a way, obviously, this is in like a really high level, like philosopher way. The humans were enslaving the machines for survival and power and everything. 
Mm-hmm. And now they're working together and everything's better. And now they have ships that look like bugs, all right? That slither <sighs> through the air, you know? Yeah, yeah. Also, that ship says it was built in 22... 24 in the EU. Mm. All their ships mm. were destroyed in the mm. last movie. The la- Okay, we already established in the last movie that they don't even know what year it actually is. So... And years the, don't even mean anything anymore. The EU doesn't exist. So they're like, um, it's fine. But it's like, the, you're not going to build it in Io and be like, it was built in the EU. So it's whatever, you know? It's whatever. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like, where do these ships come from? Why do you got so many new ships all of a sudden? Why do you have the exact same number that you had before? Why didn't you find less or more? If you can build them, <laughs> why don't you have a huge fleet of them at this point? Why do you have like eight, which is the same number you had before? You probably have 12 because they're all about the Jesus symbolism stuff, right? This is like the 12 apostles. Right. That's probably yeah. what it is. Why do you have the same number? Get more or have less. Get, have a different number, all right? <laughs> like... Cody, if you were like, like, all my cars got blown up, and then I showed up, and you had the exact same number of cars that were the exact same car, I'd be pissed. All right, I'd be like, why? I think I think these are the exact reasons why Lily Wachowski didn't get involved. There was another thing where like they were talking to Lawrence Fishburne, they're like, oh, aren't you? And he's like, no one asked me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just kind of weird. It was like, wait, you guys brought back a Morpheus character, but you didn't. Maybe Lily and you know uh lawrence were the close ones you know and lana was like no no the uh here for the new hot thing i know the reasoning that came out i don't know if this was from lana or not but was that nobody like that lauren like that not lawrence the morpheus survived lived and died so he didn't move to the new city and he didn't die at the end and go back into the matrix the way that right neo and uh, trinity did so it's like well he's i'm gone. saying plot wise yes no plot wise that's a good reason yeah but as the person who wrote the plot lana wachowski also could have been like oh we're bringing back keanu and carrie we could also bring back Lawrence fishburne you know yeah but then you know why not just bring back all of them you know why not bring back uh dozer you know what i mean oh man that's the biggest robbery of the whole trilogy is like dozer just wasn't there for the rest of it. Oh, yeah. And then they try like, to make oh, us yeah, care about other operators. I don't care about any operator except for Dozer. I like this operator. You're the man who you're like, he died. He didn't die. We're so happy. Anyway, he's not in the next one. You're like, yeah. But then in the next one, they're like, yeah, he died. And it's like, when did he? Right. They made such a big deal about him not dying. And then they're like, right. Yeah, heart right. And we loved him. It's like, what? We loved him so dearly. Everyone else in that ship died. It's like, Whatever. Anyway. Yeah. So what, Tyler, what, uh, what, what grade are you giving you know, them? What grade am I giving what, what? All right. Do you want to say, what if we said our grades on three? Wait, now hold Would up. Would that now. be fun? Hold up now. How about, okay, hold up now. Hold up now. What are you doing? Hold up now. What are you hold doing? Up. Hold up. It's okay. sketchy, I can tell. Okay, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Ready? I got it. I'm ready. I'm going to count us down. Okay. Three, two, one, B C. minus. Hold on. Hold on. You're giving this movie a C? I think so. I maybe okay, I'll no you know, I'll, mm, a C, C plus, C. Think C, about C. okay. Hold on. Here's what did thing. you give what, what did you give Matrix three? Matrix three uh what well, here's the thing I put it in the thing. I have it written down. I gave a C plus to Matrix oh. Three. You're right. So you're saying this is worse than Matrix Three? I would argue it's better than Matrix Three for sure. Like, at least at a minimum, style-wise, it's clean, all right? It's cleaner, it's sexier. It's got a little more even toned, you know? I think it's a little easier to digest. But that, but I mean, I the like... ankle cleavage alone merits a C plus, I would say. Add the rest of the movie on there, and you got a B minus in my book. In my book. But it's so, like, it's such a 20-year-later sequel, you know? Like, it's the epitome of, oh, we're doing it again, you know? 
but we're not rebooting it. We're not remaking it. We're just continuing. You know everybody's favorite movie from 20 years ago? You're saying Matrix 3 is better than this movie? Well, I'm saying, like, I like the Matrix 3 as, like, I looked at it as, like, as, like, the fun popcorn dumb movie. I think it is a good conclusion to it. And it they ramp up in, like, complexity and everything. Because I, I like the Matrix movies. I think they're, they've got some dumbness to them. But, like, I also like the real world stuff, and you don't like that real world stuff. <sighs> so. So you're are you staying firm in a C? I'll go C plus for it. You don't have to. Look, you don't have to for me. I'm just shocked that this is a worse movie than... Because, like, okay, for reference, so Matrix Resurrections is pulling 63 tomato meter, 64 audience score, okay? Yeah. Now, Matrix, what's the... Here's my thought process. It's too hard. Cody. When IMDb asked me to give it a star rating, I normally would say, nah. But this time I said, yeah. All right? And I gave it 7 out of 10 stars. Which in my which that's a C, right? That's what I gave it. But it that is what I gave it. But I guess I don't equate that. I don't equate that the same. Uh, my IMDb skill is different from my letter grade scale. Let me tell you this: the Matrix Revolution score is a thirty-five percent tomato meter, and a sixty percent audience score. Yeah. Man, but I mean, like I have a whole series called Tyler's Trash. Man, oh trash man. Movie taste. All right, so you're what are you saying C or C plus? Well, see now, now you've opened. Now that I know you also gave it, because I was trying to base it off that stars, but you're, but you know, now you've opened the floodgates here, Cody. Now I want to give it a better score because I was like, I was gonna be strong. Now I'm not gonna be. Now I'm not as strong. You're out here with the B plus. That's basically an A plus. No, B minus. B minus. B minus. Look, what is a B minus? But a B plus. But it's like it's a B minus minus. That means B plus. All right, that's what it is, Cody. Right? Hmm. That's what you're saying. So I'm out here thinking, what am I going to do it at? You know? Oh, yeah. I could have done with more, f- like, I did not like, so I, because I didn't like the kung fu in this movie as much. Okay. I felt like that it was like, the when there was a bunch of people fighting at once, it felt like the, uh, you know, like the, the low budget Chinese or Kung Fu movies, you know, where it's like mm. just a bunch of people kind of flail in their arms in a huddle. Mm. Right. And it's not, it doesn't, it's not choreographed well enough to really like showcase mm-hmm. everybody fighting and everything's kind of like people get hit and they go like, Ugh! you know, and like throw, get thrown back and stuff, but it's mm. not like the cool, like getting ripped back on wires and stuff. Right. I'm so conflicted. It's hard. It's hard out here. I'm going to go out. Mm. You got to do you. I'll go C plus because the story is better, but I feel like the action and like a lot like. I, I think for me, it's so much like the style and substance, you know, I feel like it. That just made me happier, I guess. But yeah, which I get it. All right. But I, I mean, just felt like... it's one of those where I'm like, if you're going to watch the Matrix movies, I feel like one and four are the most worthwhile, and two or three are like, if you want to complete them, watch them. Yeah, but I guess I, wouldn't, I would agree I with that. Like, again. yeah, you can't really watch four. four without watching two and three because it's just like, like, I think four does a lot of callbacks to one, but it still is a continuation of the plot of three. You know, like if three never happened, then this movie doesn't super make sense. So I think, I think you could do it. Like, I, because I mean, think about it this way: like, even one of the biggest things is him knowing Niobe and him, her like referencing the like the battle and at the end. But they also like show it, like show scenes from. They show enough husband. that you wouldn't be like totally lost. Yeah, so it's you could be like, oh, that's cool. So I could oh, but then see. but then you got to sit through the Merovingian. <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> what are these people? <laughs> I, well, that's another thing. It's like you would then. Because here's what I could see happening. Some I think what you should do is watch one and four. And if those things, if you're like want to know what the heck is up with these people, then watch two and three. I think that may. I think if you go one, four, <laughs> two, three, it makes the whole thing better. 
mm-hmm. because then you see the Merovingian in this state and then you see him like at the beginning like then you would see what he was and you'd be like oh wow, mm. that's who he is you know like that's who he was and that's what it i guess was. man and so you'd see like all that other stuff so and like you said it does make the sacrifice at the end and like some of the choices like more justified right and feel less just kind of like what's the point of that you know so right, i think right. that's the best way to do it is if you're interested in those callbacks then go back to there two. you go one four two three yeah wow the what official did recommended did order to like stay yeah yeah give it a c plus wild first one was an a yeah Oh yeah, first one was me. First one's like man. First one like the fights are so good, the story's so good, the writing's so good, the actors are so good. First one's a good movie. The aesthetic is great. It's like the green lighting and the, all those choices like work so well. Something I found interesting wow. about this movie when I was reading through like some of the fun facts was like uh, Lana talking about how in the first one, um, she used like she didn't use any natural light and was very much like made all the decisions and stuff and this one kind of it's almost like she saw like everybody talk about how awful making two and three were and how like they didn't feel like they had any control and really tried to make up for it in this one and talked about how like she constantly asked like everybody their opinion on stuff and would constantly like incorporate pretty much anybody's suggestion to try to make the movie better and i think it shows i think the movie like I like the the look of this one probably better than even the first like well not better than the first one but I I say the look of it is on par like it looked nice it was fun. right yeah you know which the uh the other two it felt like they just kind of kept dialing up the aesthetic you know where it's like we're going leather gimp suits you know like that's how it got to by the third movie right like, yeah you know dudes with zippers for their on their on their eye holes you know like it's like okay you went too far all right you were you were perfect and then you're like got it you guys love it we're gonna dial it up even more everybody said no and then they're like more you're saying more right yeah but i mean i love the two and three movie like i love matrix two and three because they're so but they are like it is a classic movie with sequels that are trash movies, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like they're just and here. Fun we are. To watch. Got a little bonus sequel too. Here we are. Oh, no yeah. one ever would have thought. Twenty years later. I definitely think this one deserves the better. Um, like, because I'm trying to do like the the letter grades on like how much I liked the movie, you know. But right. if we were doing this, like, for, like, if we were real critics, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? I would definitely rate this one above two and three. I would put it more on par with one. Maybe, like, a couple points below. Right. I'm amazed that it's rating the same as the second one. That blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah, it felt stronger to me, but... It is what it is. Yeah. Like even um, some of the things I saw where they showed. Um, gosh, what's his name? The original Agent Smith. Oh, he's doing it. Hugo too. Weaving. Hugo Weaving deliver a line and then it showed uh, Jonathan Groff delivering the line. And it seems it seems obvious that he went back and watched all of the interactions at least all of hugo weaving's parts and tried to emulate his mannerisms a lot Mm -hmm. just with like more hair (laughs) you know yeah more defined hairline yeah 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 for sure so so you love the movie it's your favorite no that's what you said but a little bit yeah (laughs) i mean i did like this i I liked all the style of it. it. wasn't perfect. Like I would love to have slapped an A on this guy. I don't think it merits it, but uh, it was, went down a lot smoother, you know, than two and three for me. And uh, I don't know, just the aesthetic and style. I was like, 
Now that's tasty, you know? That's what I'm about. Yeah. Do you think if it It'll go a long way. Yeah. Do you think if it hadn't been trying to set up sequels, it could have gotten an A from you? No, I don't I wouldn't have gone that far. I think there was still you know, I mean to get an A from me, maybe uh wrapping up the plot a little bit tighter could have gotten it up to a B. You'd have to pull out the Merovingian and the remnants to get up to a B plus. I think um I'm trying to think of, like what else you'd have to really I think you would. To your point you make a good point about like the the kung fu. Like I think you would have to tighten that up and make it a little more true to Matrix because it it feels like so much is like, oh we're we've seen Keanu as Superman, as like this superhuman power in the Matrix, and now we're seeing him as Superman Junior, you know, be like, Oh, I can do some stuff and at least make the fighting, you know, up to par. Um, that might get you an A minus. And then the rest, I don't know. I think the rest is that, to borrow a phrase from the French, that je ne sais quoi, you know, that little that X factor that the first one has. Um, yeah. So I, I think those are the things you could do to make me, make me push it up. But, you know, it doesn't have those things. But there's blue air, there's blue glasses, there's magenta suits, and uh, I'm... I'm on board for all of that. I'm about it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, there it is. Thank you for listening. You can find us, share us, and review us wherever your podcasts are found. You can yell at us on social media. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We got a new Instagram follower this week. At Opinion Havers, come join the horde, all right? Come be part of the horde. Until next time, watch movies. And have opinions. Five is going to be like Keanu Reeves riding one of the sentient robots that look like a bug, you know? Like, you're saddled up, and maybe he's got like a spear, and there's a big... I'm ready, like... I think where Lana fell short in this one, she needed that co-director. And I feel like we could fill that role. So, yeah, let's do it. You and me. Hmm.